The movie commences with the sheriff pondering over the legacy of sheriffs who served before him and the contrasting nature of the crimes and cases he presently handles. He proceeds to recount a specific case, where a man dressed in a black jacket was apprehended by a young police officer and escorted to a police car. The perpetrator was carrying a compact air tank that was connected to a hose and nozzle. Eventually, they drove to the nearby police station. At the police station, the inexperienced officer converses with his senior on the phone regarding the detained man. Shortly after ending the call, the man in the black jacket employs his handcuffs to strangle the officer, leading to his demise. After cleaning himself up in the washroom, the perpetrator departs the station and hijacks a police car. While driving on the road, he halts a passerby in a remote area and orders him to exit the vehicle. The civilian, under the impression that he is complying with a police officer, follows the man's directives. The man dressed in black then employs the nozzle of his compact air tank to expel a burst of pressurized air into the victim's head, resulting in his demise. Meanwhile, a person sporting a cowboy hat is hunting deer in the desert and takes a shot, only to injure the animal. While tracking the wounded prey, he catches sight of a black dog in the distance and decides to follow it. Eventually, he stumbles upon a drug deal that had gone wrong between a group of Mexicans with multiple vehicles and several corpses riddled with bullet wounds. Opening one of the vehicles, he notices a severely injured man asking him for water. Confiscating the man's firearm, he questions him regarding the survivor of the shootout. The individual donning the cowboy hat embarks on a quest to locate the survivor and discovers him seated next to a tree. Upon drawing near, he realizes that the individual by the tree has passed away, and next to him lies a black briefcase brimming with money. Seizing the briefcase and the man's gun, he heads towards his abode. Upon arriving, his wife, Carla Jean, interrogates him about the briefcase and firearm. The man sporting the cowboy hat is addressed as Llewellyn. That night, Llewellyn struggles to fall asleep, consumed by thoughts of the dying man he had left in the car without water. Despite his wife's apprehensions, he sets out in the middle of the night to remedy the situation. Upon returning to the site of the gunfight, Llewellyn brings a gallon of water to the vehicle. However, upon opening the car door, he discovers that the man has already passed away. From a distance, he observes two men tampering with his car, puncturing its tires, and approaching him. As they fire shots in his direction, Llewellyn takes off running, and the men pursue him in their truck. After sustaining a gunshot wound to the shoulder, Llewellyn manages to evade them by crossing a river. As Llewellyn reaches the opposite bank, he realizes that the assailant's vicious dog is still hot on his trail. Without hesitation, he pulls out his firearm and shoots the animal. Meanwhile, the man in black pays a visit to a local convenience store owned by an elderly man. His eerie and unsettling demeanor leaves the old man on edge. Eventually, the man in black poses a question to the store owner, what's the most you've ever lost in a coin toss? After some hesitation, the old man takes a chance and calls the coin toss correctly. The man in black departs from the convenience store, leaving the old man with the coin and a warning about its worth. The old man is left shaken by the encounter, unaware of how narrowly he escaped death. Meanwhile, at the location of the shootout, the man in black arrives with two individuals dressed in suits who are implied to be the owners of the black briefcase. They search the area for any sign of Llewellyn and continue their investigation. One of the individuals gives the man in black a tracking device that is linked to the briefcase, which contains the $2 million. Upon receiving the tracking device, the man in black brutally murders the two men. The next day, the sheriff and his colleague Wendell arrive at the location of the shootout, only to discover a car burned down to ashes. The sheriff concludes that it was the car stolen by the man in black, who has now exchanged it with another vehicle. While searching the area, the officers come across Llewellyn's truck, which the sheriff recognizes as belonging to Llewellyn. Eventually, the officers arrive at the site of the shootout and begin examining the area. They conclude that it might have been a drug deal gone wrong but the presence of the two suited men suggests that there could have been multiple violent incidents. Meanwhile, the man in black reaches Llewellyn's residence and, receiving no response to his knock, employs his small air tank's nozzle to shoot a pressurized blast of air at the door's lock, forcing it open. The blast hit the wall, leaving a visible mark. Upon entering the house, the man in black discovered that it was empty. He proceeded to pour himself a glass of milk from the fridge and sat down for a while. Shortly after the man in black left, the sheriff and officer Wendell arrived at Llewellyn's house. They examined the area and noticed the dent on the wall where the lock had been shot. The sheriff observed that the glass of milk on the table was still cold, indicating that the man in black had recently been there. Officer Wendell was upset that they had missed him. In search of a hiding spot for the briefcase containing the money, Llewellyn checks into a motel room and scans the area. 
He spots a ventilator shaft, ties a string to the briefcase, and pushes it inside the shaft. Afterward, the sheriff and Officer Wendell receive a lab report on the bodies found at the shootout scene. They are puzzled by the fact that one of the bodies had a bullet entry wound on the forehead, but no exit wound. The following day, Llewellyn starts preparing for his pursuers. Llewellyn rents an extra room in the motel, choosing to stay in room 139 and renting room 137, while leaving room 138 empty. The man in black tracks the signal from the device and arrives at the motel, surveying the area and following the beeping light on the tracker. He parks his car in front of Llewellyn's room and checks the motel map at the front desk, then proceeds to search the rooms one by one. Eventually, the man in black rents a room in the motel and removes his shoes, carrying a pressurized air hand nozzle as he walks towards room 138. As Llewellyn attempts to retrieve the briefcase from the vent using a tent pole, the man in black waits outside. He uses the air tank to blast open the door lock and enters the room with a rifle. However, he finds a different man in room 138 and fatally shoots him. Then, a man emerges from the bathroom and fires at the man in black, but he manages to shoot him first. There is another man hiding behind the shower curtain who pleads for his life, but the man in black still kills him. While Llewellyn was in the room next door, he heard a disturbance coming from the adjacent room where the man in black was staying. The man in black removed his socks and sat on the bed while searching the room for the briefcase. His attention was drawn to the ventilator shaft, which he opened using a coin, only to find that the briefcase was missing, leaving behind only skid marks. Llewellyn, who had managed to escape, hitchhiked to a nearby location. Meanwhile, a man named Mr. Dotwells entered a luxurious office where his boss asked him if he was familiar with Anton Chigger's appearance. The pair engage in a conversation about Anton Chig, the individual they initially employed to locate their misplaced funds but who has now betrayed them and is acting independently. Mr. Dotwells has been tasked with recovering the missing money and capturing Anton. Llewellyn arrives at a new lodging place called Eagle Pass, registered and requests the receptionist to notify him of any suspicious visitors. In the wee hours, Llewellyn becomes aware that the suitcase may be under surveillance. After discovering the tracking device, he prepares to dispose of it when he hears a strange sound outside his room. He moves silently, grabs his shotgun, and aims it at the door, turning off the lamp to wait. A shadow of a man slips under the doorframe, revealing that it is Anton Chigar. Anton fires at the lock, striking Llewellyn in the chest. Llewellyn returns fire with his shotgun and leaps out the window, while Anton misses him with a shot. Llewellyn returns to the entrance of the motel and proceeds through the rear alley. Anton spots him and fires a shot from the window, striking Llewellyn in the side. Llewellyn runs and takes cover around a corner, finding the street deserted. He flags down a passing truck and enters, but before he can depart, Anton shoots the driver. Llewellyn accelerates, with Anton continuing to fire at the vehicle. The car crashes, and Llewellyn disembarks, using another car for cover. Observing Anton's movements through the windows of a nearby diner, he watches as Anton approaches and examines the car, tracing the blood trail with his gaze. In a moment of quick thinking, Anton evades a shotgun attack from Llewellyn. Llewellyn fires his weapon repeatedly at the car behind which Anton had taken cover, but upon inspection, Anton has vanished and made his escape. Injured and battered, Llewellyn decides to cross the border into Mexico on foot. Strolling along the sidewalk of the bridge, Llewellyn encounters a cluster of young men. In his desperation and fear, he offers $500 for a coat from one of them, then throws the briefcase over the side of the bridge. Following his successful crossing of the border, Llewellyn passes out and later regains consciousness on a stone staircase in a Mexican park. There he is greeted by a band playing a cheerful tune, to whom he gives money and asks for medical assistance. Meanwhile, Anton Chigger attends to his own injuries. Anton creates a diversion by igniting a piece of cloth in the gas tank of a vehicle parked outside a pharmacy, causing an explosion that distracts the public and shopkeepers, allowing him to pilfer medical supplies unnoticed. He proceeds to a hotel where he extracts shrapnel from his left thigh. Meanwhile, the sheriff intends to visit Carla Jean and Otis to check whether she possesses any knowledge relevant to the investigation. Meanwhile, Llewellyn awakens in a hospital bed, with Mr. Wells present at his side. They converse about the missing funds and Anton Chick, with Wells urging Llewellyn to surrender the money if he desires Wells' help in handling Chigger. When Llewellyn denies having the funds, Wells suggests that Chigger might target his wife, Carla Jean. Wells makes one final effort to persuade Llewellyn to part with the money before departing. In Odessa, the sheriff meets with Carla Jean, who claims to be unaware of Llewellyn's whereabouts when questioned about him. The sheriff proposes safeguarding Llewellyn from his pursuers, but before departing, he imparts knowledge to Carla Jean about an air gun typically utilized for animal slaughter. 
Carla Jean grows uneasy and inquires as to why the sheriff would share such information, to which he replies with uncertainty, stating that his thoughts may have wandered to Anton Chigar. Meanwhile, in Mexico, Carson Wells retraces Llewellyn's path and successfully recovers the briefcase from the side of the bridge. After retrieving the briefcase from the bridge, Carson Wells goes back to his hotel room and finds Anton Chigar already there. Wells attempts to bargain with Anton, but Anton insists that death is inevitable and urges him to accept it. Anton questions Wells if the rule you followed brought you to this, of what use was the rule. However, their conversation is interrupted by the ringing phone, and Anton shoots Wells before picking up the phone to speak with Llewellyn. Anton Chigger offers Llewellyn a deal. In exchange for the money, Anton will spare Llewellyn's wife. When Llewellyn refuses, Anton threatens him. Llewellyn returns to the United States, retrieves the money, and buys new clothes. He contacts Carla Jean to warn her about the danger and arranges for her to leave the country for safety until he can deal with Chigar. Meanwhile, Anton discovers that the original owner of the briefcase had planted two tracking devices inside and had given one to the Mexicans. In a fit of anger, Anton storms into the office of the man who owned the $2 million briefcase and kills him. Now both the Mexicans and Anton are after Llewellyn. Carla Jean calls the sheriff and offers to reveal Llewellyn's location at the auto bus terminal in El Paso to help him. Meanwhile, Anton tries to track down her location. While walking in El Paso, Llewellyn comes across a young woman lounging under the sun near an apartment building. The woman offers him a beer, but he initially turns down her offer. However, she insists, and he eventually gives in. The sheriff arrives at Llewellyn's location and notices several civilians running away from the apartment building. He sees the woman who spoke to Llewellyn earlier dead in the pool and quickly enters the apartment. Unfortunately, he discovers that Llewellyn has already been killed by the Mexicans. Later that night, Carla Jean arrives at the scene and the sheriff gives her a solemn look, signaling that her husband is no more. The sheriff and the local police chief in El Paso meet at a diner to discuss the escalating brutality of the crimes being committed. The police chief mentions that Anton had revisited one of his crime scenes. This comment inspires the sheriff to investigate the location where Llewellyn was murdered. To his surprise, the lock on the door had been punched through. Anton Chigger waits silently behind the door, listening for any signs of the sheriff's approach. In his search of the room, the sheriff finds no trace of Chigger but does discover an open ventilation lid and a quarter. Later, he seeks counsel from a longtime friend named Ellis, expressing his growing frustration with the Llewellyn and Chigger case and his desire to retire from the job. Ellis shares a story of a fellow police officer who was killed in his own home in front of his wife and reminds the sheriff that the presence of evil in the world is not a new phenomenon and that he must learn to accept it. Upon returning home from her mother's funeral, Carla Jean discovers Anton Chigger waiting in her room. She acknowledges that she was not surprised to see him, as she suspected their encounter was far from over. Carla Jean attempts to reason with Anton, stating that she has done nothing wrong to deserve harm. However, Anton reveals his intention to follow through with his plan, as Llewellyn refused to cooperate with him. Carla Jean resigns herself to her fate, explaining that she knew she was going to die from the moment she laid eyes on him recognizing the unpredictable nature of his actions. Anton takes out a coin and flips it, believing that it's the only fair way to decide Carla Jean's fate without breaking his word. Carla Jean, however, is angry and refuses to guess, insisting that Anton chooses to kill and Chance has nothing to do with it. The following scene depicts Anton leaving Carla Jean's house, checking his shoes for blood. While Anton is driving, he is involved in a car accident. Shortly after, two boys on a bike come by and Anton pays for one of their shirts to use as a makeshift sling for his arm and walk away. Meanwhile, the retired sheriff shares a breakfast with his wife and recounts a couple of dreams he had the previous night. In one dream, he meets his father in town. But since his father died young, the sheriff is much older than him in the dream. In the dream, his father gives him some money, but he loses it somehow. In the second dream, they were both riding horses in the mountains and it was snowing. The father rode past him without saying anything, carrying fire in a horn. The sheriff knew in the dream that his father was going to make a fire ahead and he would be there waiting for him. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Cinematic Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed our journey through the story of this film. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more movie narrations. Until next time, this is Cinematic Chronicles signing off.